Ready for those mic phones, okay? <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> hey, my name is Tony Hadamillo, T-O-N-Y-J-A-R-A-M-I-L-L-O. -L -L Who are those guys laughing at you over there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they've been laughing at me out here for, for years now, but, you know, we all have a good time out here. Okay, you bet. Tony, what's your title? I'm the Park Development Supervisor. Okay. I actually design and oversee the construction projects of our park trails and open space projects. Okay. And the city's certified pyrotechnician. Any kind of thumbnail what's going to be going on tomorrow? How uh, bigger, better, and bigger? Um, this is, you know, we call it the largest display in the state. The reason we do that is because of these guys right here. There isn't any other professional display in the state that I'm aware of at this point that shoots anything larger than probably maybe a five or a six inch shell. So as we get into sevens, eights, and tens, that's what makes us the largest show in the state right here. You can see the space we have here in the open space area, which allows us to do so. These require 70 feet per diameter inch of clearance to spectators. Therefore, you got to have this kind of space to be able to do that. How high are those big ones go? Um, each one of these things, but this one in particular, they're um, 100 feet per diameter inch. So obviously 10 inch, you're going to go 1,000 feet in the sky. This entire show is all electronic, computerized. Um, it's all programmed into a computer and downloaded into a field module, which isn't on site because we don't want to one, we don't want to damage it. Two, we just want to keep it protected and we don't want any of the frequencies or anything here to, to send anything off. So it won't arrive on site until about six o'clock tomorrow night. Um, these igniters right here, this is an electronic match. Uh, they are actually wired into each one of these fuses right here. Uh, we went down about two weeks ago and they you know, wired and ignited all these shells right here. Uh, they in turn clip to one of these pod boxes, which corresponds with these shells. The shell will go into the tube. Each one of those will come back and wire this pod box right here. These uh, pod boxes have a cable which wired to the computer module, the field module that sits out there in the middle of everything. Thing. From that point, we have one lead, which is a power lead, that runs from the field module, runs all the way back to our command center, and that's where all the action happens. Uh, once show's time starts, I have an actual headset. The rapids give me a five-minute countdown at the zero point. The music choreography begins, as well as the show. We just hit the, the, what we call the dead man switch, and uh, the show sequentially, as the computer calls out whatever pod, whatever position, fires the show in that sequence. All electronic then? All electronic. Uh, we do have the old style as we call it. Uh, this was state of the art at one point. Uh, the old style manual pin boards. Uh, these are kind of the same concept. There's a rail board that sits out in the field that each one of these igniters wire to, which in turn wires to this cable and runs all the way back to our command center. And then you actually take this red probe right here and touch one of these pins individually and it sets off the, the round. You can imagine um, 1,200, 1,500 shells that we're doing right now, having these boards are 160 position. We used to have these tables with several of these boards running along these tables. It would take four or five of us to manually shoot the show and having to know where each of these shells are located. Did you ever hit the wrong one? <laughs> well, I'm sure we did, but nobody knows it but us. You know? so we're not going to say. You know? Uh, right now, you know, it's all, again, electronic, it's all computerized. We, we can program the show, we can see the show before it's even out, out here in the field on the computer, what it's going to do. We can check our timing through our music. If we have any dead spots or any slow areas, we can speed those up or we use some of these as fillers. So if we see some, some black sky, which we as part of technicians don't like to see, we start throwing in some of these fillers to fill, to fill the sky a little bit, you know, and liven up the crowd. That's cool. You know, over here we have a crowd which sets a little bit further away, but in our prior shows at another site, we were pretty close to the crowd. We can hear the boos. <laughs> yeah, we don't like to hear that. So, you know, we'd run a whole rail here and throw up 15, 20 shells at a time and just, you know, get the crowd all fired up. So. Tony, that's the bolt of the show. How many charges, how long, and how much? Um, right now shows? we've got 1,500 shells, uh, total show, 25 minute duration, 
uh, as the, the show winds down, we'll have about a 500 shell finale, and believe it or not, 30 seconds for that 500 shells to go off. So if you do the math, probably about 16, 17 shells a second. What's the most so, fun part of your job, Tony? Well, I enjoy my entire job, but obviously this is what I look forward to right here. This is, you know, something that we, as the Parks Division, and me personally, can give back to our community. This, this is it right here. How much does this cost? Uh, the shells that you see out here right now, the, the approximation of that is probably about $30,000. Uh, the Colorado Rapids and the Commerce City Parks or Commerce City uh, are partners in this whole event here. Uh, Commerce City provides all the technical experience, and the setup, as well as the equipment. And the Colorado Rapids actually pay for all the product. So it's a, it's a direct partnership between the two. How many uh, How many residents do you expect to come out and see this? Oh gosh, you know it's hard to even say. But I mean, we've asked you can drive any street out here, any park, any neighborhood. I'd say there's in the surrounding area. I'd have to guess 20,000 plus. I mean, it's hard to put a number on that. Why do you call it the dead man switch? Well, <laughs> uh, you know, you got to hold that switch, and there's really nothing that you can't let off with through the entire show. It's unfortunate, but if there's ever an accident, the only way you're going to let off with it is if the person holding the switch is injured or something. It's, uh, it's actually a, an NFPA requirement that you cannot have a switch that you physically switch on or off. It has to be a spring-loaded button that is held down. What kind of drilling rush do you get with that five-minute countdown coming, you know, 30 seconds, whatever? <laughs> well, I mean, my adrenaline <laughs> rush probably started about three or four days ago, but, you know, it just keeps building the intensity each, each day. But as it comes down to the showtime, I mean, my heart's pounding. As the show's going on, you know, I'm just seeing what's what's going on. We actually have a timer inside that takes down to, to where we're at. And, you know, I mean, it's just building up. You know, we know where we're at at any given time. And, you know, it's like, okay, here we go, guys. We're ready. And it's, it's finale time. You can tell, just tell by, you know, everybody's reaction, the crowd's reaction, and just the way the sky lights up. How do you uh, decide what new fireworks you're going to use? Do you check out other shows? Or? Um, you know, I don't really get an opportunity to see much of other shows myself because I'm always out here. Most people shoot on the fourth, but you know, our supplier is a good resource to us. Uh, you know, the different shells that we know we have, we have a script. We know exactly if you see some of these, they have numbers on them. It tells us what pod they're in, what position they're in. We know that we didn't like that shell if it just didn't really give us a good effect. Oh, okay. We just take check it off. That, we go back through the script. And, you know, and then each year, obviously, manufacturers are coming out with bigger and better things. So uh, we always ask that question, you know, what's new out there that's going to give us our best thing for our buck and you know, really try and, and uh, provide that. But, you know, it's, there's so many varieties out there anymore. Those are cool. I took a peek into one of those tubes. What is it that launches? How do you launch one Actually, of those shells? This particular bottom piece of these shells, uh, some of them are cone shapes and they're flat. That's actually the lift charge on the shell. Uh, this this fuse runs down and ignites that lift pack. It propels that shell into the air. At the same time, it, it propels that. There's an internal time fuse that burns as it's reaching its elevation breaking point. As soon as that time fuse reaches that point, then you get your burst. So each one of these has a lift pack on it. That's what propels it into the sky. One more time, what's, what's involved with this helmet? Uh, how high it goes? What does it weigh? How much power does it How much does it cost? Well, these particular 10 inch shells right here, you can grab a hold of one of them. I mean, they're probably a good 25 pounds. I mean, they're, they're heavy guys. That's why they put the rope on them. You don't want to be lifted up by the fuse or anything like that, as compared to, compared to some of these little guys. But um, this this one here, again, will go about 1,000 feet in the air. They're about 100 feet per diameter inch. Um, you know, I don't really know how much uh, black powder or how much lift charge is in them, but obviously it's enough to get it 1,000 feet in the sky. What is, what is the uh, this one right here is probably in the three three hundred.